Oh yeah, I'm going to milk this game. Hi everyone, it is I. A little while ago, I talked about Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion's main story mode, in all its glory. Here I am again to talk about Spooky's Endless Mode, in a review that will attempt to cover everything interesting about the game, but in the end just boil down to a medium rare specimen review. So let's not waste any time, and leap into the first suspiciously well edited specimen segment. Coming up first is indie horror classic Whiteface. Yeah, that's him alright. Unlike most of the other specimens that take inspiration from other horror media, Whiteface was ripped directly from I'm Scared, because obviously, why change what's already perfect? Now I don't know a lot about I'm Scared lore, but I remember a PewDiePie Let's Play from like a decade ago, and I remember something about him being an entity that was turned into data, which would explain why he hasn't changed at all, because this is just the exact same entity that we saw in I'm Scared. Whiteface then arrives in an L-shaped room accompanied by a compressed, foreboding piano. The sound depicts his arrival, and when he does arrive, he just chills at the entrance door behind you. He doesn't attack and he doesn't move, he just waits, looking at you. He shifts the environment to be more I'm scared-esque, with unique pixely graphics and crimson vines that droop down from the ceiling. After going through a few rooms relatively uninterrupted, he begins to attack, from where it's hard to know. The best way to tell if he's drawing near is his iconic sound, as well as the screen flashing red. As far as difficulty goes, it's one of those endless specimens that doesn't have much going for it when it's alone, but along with other specimens it becomes ruthless, especially given its unpredictable teleporting nature. When killed, it breaks the fourth wall, telling you that death is no escape. You're then taken to a screen where Whiteface mocks your pathetic existence, and like I'm scared, it gives you the chance to speak to him. On the hanging victim's body will be the player's name. It isn't really clear what he wants you to say, but if you type anything, then the game just crashes, unless you type open. If you do type open, he gives you a quick anatomy lesson and takes you through a tour of a place similar to the heart room from I'm Scared, where you have to run from a realistic white face while stuck at 1 HP. It's a pretty neat easter egg, but the heart rooms don't have a whole lot going for them. Mechanically speaking, the game becomes a walking simulator because the new realistic white face just follows behind. He doesn't have any interesting mechanics to spice things up, like he doesn't go through walls or slow you down. It's a pretty free secondary chase. After about 15 rooms, you actually escape Whiteface and are granted a second chance at life. Whiteface is the only specimen in the entire game that has this sort of second chance mechanic, and I love that they gave it to Whiteface of all things. The game is simple. To touch the arrows is the key. If you get caught, you lose. A sound will predict its arrival. It is Whiteface. And now that I've talked about this cool specimen, let's talk about something that isn't that. Ladies and gelheads, welcome to Otto the Otter's Pizzeria. Here we have a big empty clown cage, delicious floor pizza, and a giant semi-aquatic animatronic that just stands there and stares straight ahead. Be careful though, because if you eat the delicious floor pizza, he will suddenly spring to life and briskly jog after you. He's big, lumbering, and hits like a Goo Goo Gaga baby with muscular dystrophy. You will not get killed by this guy. All signs point to this being a joke specimen spoofing Five Nights at Freddy's, but I drew a similar connection in the past that ended up being wrong, so I have zero credibility. I might not be the best at spotting parody, but I'm certain that this giant anthropomorphic otter isn't a serious attempt at a specimen. But with that being said, I think Otto the Otter is a funny man. I love that he's much taller than the door frames, but walks through anyways. I like to imagine that's him opening the door and just breaking through the door frame. He's wholly unthreatening, and it's almost relieving to get him on a rechase. His death screen is just him screaming with the camera getting pushed closer and closer to his face, with pizza raining from the heavens. I remember the days of Five Nights at Freddy's and how it took the internet by storm. And I also remember the annoying fan base of underages that would harass YouTubers and the like to play it. So, I'm assuming it's a similar case, or a similar scenario where children prodded for a FNAF specimen, and Akuma Kira retaliated with one Otto the Otter. 
It is disappointing given how insanely influential Five Nights at Freddy's was on horror at the time to get two representatives that are just making fun of it, them being Otto and the phone guy. At this point, I wonder what could have been accomplished with a FNAF rep. Obviously, Akuma Kira puts a lot of time and effort into everything around these specimens, and I can only imagine what could have been if that same treatment was given to a FNAF rep. Maybe you could have a spawn locale set in a much more dilapidated and ruined restaurant, and you have to navigate to the backstage where a tattered animatronic sits in the corner holding the key to the way out, activating when you take the key. And maybe it could be like FNAF 3 where during the chase there are little hallucinations that attack you during the chase if you acknowledge them. Or alternatively, you can just give Otto the Otter a gun that one taps you on the same frame he activates. Ladies and gel heads, give it up for Otto the Otter. Wow, that specimen sure was easy to deal with. I wonder if that's going to be a trend with the unknown specimens. Wait, look, a child. Spooper is a funky little worm with a bedsheet on his head. Only he's not a funky little worm and is actually this red cyclopean parasite monster masquerading as a funky little worm. He doesn't have his own specialized spawn locale and just kind of appears at a door that you have to go through. He blocks the exit door and just kind of observes you. The only way to make it past him and through the door is to beat him with the axe. He will continue to appear at subsequent room doors, each time looking more battered and bloodied than the last. If the sheet is tattered enough, you can see a large brown eyeball in the center of where his chest would be. After enough abuse, he warps the surroundings into a sickly yellowish brown, with melting wallpaper and grimy floor and ceiling tiles. It's as if the mansion itself has gotten sick in Spooper's presence. During Spooper's chase, he drains your health at a snail's pace and occasionally causes you to hurl up half of your body's worth of blood. If you for some reason take the time to examine the blood puddle, you can see a little creature was developing in your stomach. How adorable. Ever since you last hit Spooper with the axe, he has been infesting these subsequent rooms with spores. The function of which is to have the spores gather in the player's stomach to later be thrown up along with half the player's body worth of their fluids. The player will puke an average of three times per encounter with Spooper, each time taking off a small chunk of health as well as slowing the player down. This specimen does a great job at making you feel panicked, especially when there are other specimens present. Its impact on gameplay is almost unparalleled. You do not want to get this specimen as it completely disables your ability to heal and having the ability to heal turned off with the possibility of simultaneously being chased by something like Ben, Ringu, or the Deer God is insane. Spooper changes it from a game of don't get hit too often to don't get hit, period, as every single tiny amount of damage done to you is permanent. Well, permanent as long as he's chasing you anyways. I hated seeing the funky little man pop up because I knew the next 20 to 40 rooms were going to be a panic-induced adrenaline run. It's cool that this game has two parasite monsters and both of them are so different. One punishes you for running while the other has your pinky finger glued to the L-shift key. One has a slow, melancholy chase theme while the other's is fast. Occasionally you can see Spooper's true form and little spooper hallucinations will pop up. As far as I'm aware, they don't have any direct effect on gameplay, but it is nice to see that this parasite monster has such an insane effect on the player's mind. In my opinion, this is the single most obnoxiously overpowered specimen, and the only catharsis I get from seeing him is beating this small defenseless child with an axe. Epic joke. The entire challenge that this specimen presents is the whole not healing thing. Other specimens can and will arrive to do the dirty work, but by the grace of God, if you are lucky and they don't, then you just have to run through as you normally would, occasionally stopping to puke up a baby. Good specimen, even though I never want to see you again in my entire life. Oh yeah, Andy has a death screen. What does it mean? Uh, wait. Why am I outside? This goes against pretty much everything I stand for as a hashtag gamer. 
This looks like the perfect place to get chased by the Deer Lord's e-girl cousin. This next specimen has a much different design philosophy than the others. Terziak, or Unknown Specimen 4, is a forest spirit. A forest spirit that brings back the souls of dead animals to be chopped up again by yours truly. Funnily enough, her cutesy design is entirely based on the fact that Akumahira got tired of drawing scary monsters. She's the only thing, besides a certain semi-aquatic mammal robot, that wasn't designed for the scary. She's a floating anime girl with white hair, wolf ears, and what look like wooden antlers. Moving on to sound design, she says things like, Such strange prey you are. Let the cold consume you. Death is near. And like the Dear Lord, Why do you run? Pussy! I actually had the voice actress for Terziak comment on the last Spookies video. It felt like I had received a celebrity endorsement. I don't feel like going and digging the comment up to show here, so you'll just have to take my word for it. During her chase, she hinders your vision with a cold blue filter, like you're drawing nearer to frostbite with every passing second. Animal spirits will appear to block your way, the animal spirits being shockingly well animated and modeled. The animals demand you do what any self-respecting Monster Hunter player does, and amass several animal rights violations. The spirit animal mechanic is one of the more fleshed out specimen mechanics. It doesn't slow you down or waste your time, and it actually forces the player to use the axe in an interesting way. Most of the time the axe is completely useless or just gets something to go away for a second, but here it's actually a core feature of the specimen. Terziak alone isn't very interesting. She phases through walls and doesn't care about the axe, so just Ringu again. How many times have I said that? But in conjunction with the cool intro locale, the visual effects, and the spirit animals, Terziak is a pretty alright specimen. When killed by Terziak, you're taken back out to the snowy forest and placed in the middle of a 2D clearing. The only thing you can do is watch as wolves appear from the trees and rip you apart. Ending in a pretty gruesome scene. Thanks, Terziak. The final unknown specimen is the one that personally scared me the most. And when I say it scared me the most, I mean it scared me by a long shot. You stumble upon a dingy, barren hallway with bookshelves and some tables. The room loops. Each time you go through a door, the room counter does not increment. Each loop, things change. The hallway becomes more disgusting and unkempt, eventually culminating as a hellish crimson red. It all comes to a boiling point when you see a tattered figure standing in front of a table, after just writing a note for you. I've been watching you for a while now. Ah uh, yes, the most normal thing you can say when introducing yourself to someone. And directly after that room, it goes back to business as usual. Or does it? After two rooms, it becomes clear that what you just witnessed was just the beginning, as your vision slowly grows darker and redder as time goes on. Notes will start showing up on faded specimen ones, hinting that your stalker knows you very well. She even writes cute little poems, such as, Why even bother filling your lungs? How romantic. The notes will continue to pop up, repeating themselves constantly. Before talking about Lisa from Spookies though, let's talk about a little known fragment of lost horror media called P.T. And I'm saying little known sarcastically. P.T. was a teaser for Silent Hills, and for a goofy little demo it managed to be a strong contender for one of the scariest pieces of horror in history. How does that even happen? In that game, a ghostly woman named Lisa haunts the player in a constantly repeating L-shaped hallway always watching from the shadows. A permanent smile with vomit-soaked lips, a dress drenched in blood, and a missing eye, and disgustingly matted hair, all while jittering and contorting her body in inhuman ways. The hallway itself is crawling with bugs. This demo straddles the line between a subtle stomach-turningly chilling experience and an in-your-face horrifying one, at the same time, perfectly. There's this room in Spookies that I called the jump scare room in the last video. This room is basically PT too. Like, just look at the note where Akuma Kira copes about Silent Hill's cancellation. 
I don't know for 100% certain if this is actually inspired by PT, but it's the PT room. Come on. Wait, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, Spooky's Lisa is derivative of PT in every feasible way. Starting with the design, it's just polygonal PT Lisa with giant swollen ankles. She even has an eye missing. Her character model is writhing in pain. It is abundantly clear she has either a stiff neck or a broken one. Her sound design is incredible. You can hear her groan, gag, and wail. Her music is amazing. It somehow manages to sound slow and fast at the same time. Fast to parallel the player's heart rate when seeing her, and slow to parallel the player's slow and painful death at her hands. Or giant swollen ankles. Mechanically, she's the same as Ben the Merchant and this bandage head guy. Only she's three billion times more threatening as she doesn't flinch at the axe. She inches forward slowly when you are looking at her, but when you aren't looking, she moves instantly. She has this mechanic where she becomes less and less visible the more she chases you, which does nothing to help my poor baby heart. Strongest introduction in the game. Like, even the rechase has a better introduction than most specimens original introduction. When she appears for a rechase, she isn't immediately attacking you, but you can tell she's there because all background noise is just killed, eventually being replaced by slow, labored breaths. The breaths have this characteristic to them where it sounds like whoever's making them is trying their best to remain hidden, but despite that, it does not make me feel better. If anything, it makes it even scarier. Like, you're in the eyes of a stalker that's been watching you for who knows how long and is about to make their move. I don't like it. Wow, this looping hallway sure is gross, but at least there isn't anything immediately dangerous. Ha, huh, I knew it, you forgot your inhaler. Well, I know you can't do anything as long as I'm looking at you, so I- Wow, look a note! I hope this isn't going where I think this is going. When she gets you, she berates you for being a fake friend and- Ew. Girl, put those things away, there are kids watching. Bug woman scare pig. Good job, developer person. Those were all the new specimens that Spooky's Endless Mode has to offer, but there's still more to talk about because Endless Mode has some silly little quirks that are present in the base game. The most notable being that other specimens can join the chase and work alongside each other to game end you. Specimens won't show up at the beginning of a new run because you have to do their whole specimen encounter locale again. Once encountered, they're added to a rechase pool that the game will randomly pull from later down the line. This creates a sense of difficulty escalation. The further you delve into the mansion, the more the game has to offer in terms of specimens to put on your frail little shoulders. It's also worth mentioning that the specimens aren't even remotely balanced either. Spooper is overpowered, Rebecca Black is ridiculously cheap, and Lisa is a nightmare to deal with. On the other green gooey hand, Jelly is a non-issue, the host, and this worm guy can do hardly anything. There's also the new Ringu form. I knew about Ringu's evolved form going into this, but for some reason, my tiny reptilian bird brain came to the conclusion it was only in the OG version and not part of the HD renovation. But wow, you look at that, three-dimensional Ringu too. Initially, I thought the evolved form's designs kind of sucked, like they were trying way too hard to be scary when the original was fine. But honestly, the 3D version of Ringu's evolved form looks great. Don't know why she took her socks off though. The second evolved form kind of loses me, like, why do you have six arms? The new Ringu is pretty much its own specimen at this point, so, uh, transition? Die! She has a separate intro locale where the darkness is replaced with static. Her music is much more anxiety inducing and she has one of the most interesting mechanics. Static will close in on the player, blinding them for a full two seconds. After two seconds, it retreats at the sound of a camera and continues the cycle of blinding you, retreating, then blinding you again. I like mechanics like this because it rewards the player for memorizing and learning things about the game. In this case, it's room layouts, but if you're not sure, you can form a strategy of waiting at the door until the static closes in and then running through. When you get to the next room, the static will then cycle back around to being far away, letting you see your immediate surroundings. Anyways, that's about all I can say for the new Ringu. For all the specimens I call literally just Ringu 2.0, this specimen is literally just Ringu 2.0. The storyline of the guy that dies of thirst in the original game continues as both he and, judging by the death screens, the player, are now souls trapped wandering an endless maze. 
The romantic guy talks about dodging the draft until Spooky confiscates his pen privileges. There's also the story of a child that somehow makes it to floor 1000 for a party or something. Good for her. There's a mechanic in the game where you can get multiples of one specimen in a chase, which I think is just hysterical. I distinctly remember running from three jellies during a siren chase. Also something about jelly, during endless mode chases, instead of moving his upper body like usual, he opts to floating towards you while hitting the fattest whip you've seen in your entire life. Gelheads, I'm beginning to understand. My eyes are opening to the funny green guy. If you hit him with the axe over a bottomless pit, he just despawns. Honestly, how could you not have him as your favorite specimen? Upon reaching floor 1000, you're rewarded with cheats. You can choose to go to any room you previously made it to and also choose to have specific specimens spawn. And just so nobody else has to suffer like I did, make absolutely sure you are connected to the internet when you die after reaching floor 1000. If you aren't, then Spooky gives you the finger and doesn't give you the hatch. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Sorry it took so long. It was supposed to be out by, like, last week, but God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Chris Pratt, and Gandhi all hate me, and it took me, like, two weeks just to find Herziak. You might have noticed that the production value for this video isn't non-existent, and for that I'd like to thank Flatter Kitten for helping me edit. I'll put a link to her channel in the description. Also, you might have heard a peeping noise at points throughout the video. Uh, allow me to show you the culprits. Her name is Roberta, and she is a single-celled organism. Roberta, do you have anything you want to say to the people? Uh-huh. Wow.